Oh, ha, ha, ha. I haven't uploaded in so long that my channel's become a barren wasteland. Very funny, future Dan. But I'm back, and I'm married, and I'm totally focused. Oh, hey, Mario Maker 2. I'll just, uh, I'll just go play that for just, uh, just a little bit. And welcome to another episode of that cyber channel. I'm Dan Cyber and I'm not dead Most of you aren't celebrating with me are you? It's fine. It's cool. It's whatever. A lot has changed over the last couple months as you can tell But more importantly we got Super Mario Maker 2 and I have Mario Maker! Loving it? Make a Mario Maker video! Bob? You said Mario Maker? Hey, Bob from the Wolf Dan here. You got some levels for me? I don't care how hard they are. I just need some levels. I haven't really touched the maker. Just give me the levels, Dan. Dan, give me the levels. I have none. I just started. Ah! Ah! Now while the Big Red here has definitely popularized the maker genre, games have been offering up level design tools as far back as the days of the NES. Yes, way back in the times of Stranger Things. I, I just need the tag. Granted, it was much harder to share your levels back then. It wasn't like the NES had a modem built in yet. Back then, you would actually have to go over to your friend's house to play games. Oh, F and A, I sound like my dad. Well, join old Papa Cybert as I take you back in time to cover some of my favorite makers. Level designers, map editors, whatever you want to call them. Future Dan, take us back to 1984. Thanks, really went well all out with that graphic. Our first stop on our journey brings us to the NES with Excite Bike. Admittedly, as a kid, I never actually played much of Excite Bike, but thanks to the NES Classics on Switch, I've been popping in time to time to play a little Excite Bike versus. Usually losing. For you that have never played it, Excite Bike is a dirt bike racing game where you need to position yourself to hit jumps correctly to get the fastest time possible. If you've ever played Happy Wheels or Trials, it's a much more basic version of that. But one of the most impressive things this game had to offer was a full track editor that allowed you to create your own tracks. The track designer gives you a range of different jumps and obstacles for you to place. Starting at the beginning, you'll be able to place down pieces of track until you think you've placed enough or reached the track limit. So yes, if your goal is to have a track with one jump, you can create the most epic single hop. <laughs> It takes a second to get a hold of the controls for this, but afterwards it's incredibly easy to use. Being a good track maker though, that's a whole other challenge. I definitely made some impossible to dodge obstacles while I was messing around, and unless you have a good understanding of how to build a track, chances are you'll just lock your friends in the slowest hop race of your lives. Now while it's easy to use, it does unfortunately fail the Bob Ross test. Of course, the very important test of your ability to draw Bob Ross in the maker Excite Bike does not pass, so we'll mark this down as a not so happy accident. The NES had a couple of other maker type modes such as Wrecking Crew and Load Runner, but I didn't have an NES at home. Instead, I had the Sega Master System, which had its own game with a level maker. It's called Penguin Land. Nintendo had Excite Bike and Sega had Penguin Land. Penguin Land is a game I've been wanting to bring up for a while, but it's kind of hard to talk about. Mostly because there's really only one interesting thing about it, and that is it's set on the moon. Which, fun fact, this game was based off an abandoned NASA project from the early 80s to see how animals from colder climates dealt with space. Also, fun fact, I made that completely up. You just got cybered! So what is the goal of Penguin Land? Well, simple. You must navigate your egg through a vertical maze by breaking ice blocks. You'll need to carefully pick what blocks you break to get your egg through tricky platforming, crushers, and of course, moon bears. But perhaps you'd like your own chance to take a stab at creating one of these columns of nonsense. Well, fortunately for you, there's a level editor here and it's actually quite impressive. You're given nearly every brick in the game and it's basically just like Mario Maker. Oh crap, I said it. You making space levels, Dan? No, Bob, I'm placing space bears for a penguin. You talking code for a nice level with a chain chop on a Goomba, Dan? I'm not even talking about the same game. Don't lie to me, Dan. Stop it, Bob! Ah! Ah! As I was saying, you'll have a variety of different blocks to pick from, and then placing them is fairly simple. Assuming you can figure out how to make this ridiculous D-pad work. 
Building a good stage is much more difficult for an average player. If you're not much of a maze builder, then you'll end up just creating levels that are too easy or impossible. However, it does pass the Bob Ross test, which makes it infinitely better than Excite Bike. Cyber Channel approved. Let's fast forward to 1998 with a game I was obsessed with when I was young, StarCraft. StarCraft was my first real introduction to the RTS genre, and while I really enjoy the game, I'm also terrible at it. I don't understand how they build so fast. My complete incompetence aside, StarCraft was bundled together with its own map maker called simply Editor. And while the name was simple, the editor was incredible on so many levels. Now, you could do your basics such as creating a train, setting up some starting points, drawing Bob Ross, which I would show you, but when I went back to get the footage, Blizzard deleted the StarCraft editor, leaving only StarCraft 2 editors. So, here's the StarCraft 2 version of Bob Ross. But this editor also included game logic. Again, something I was going to capture, but guess what was missing? This opened up the editor to so many more possibilities. With some basic knowledge on game mechanics and programming, you could create full-on story missions you'd see in the campaign. I once made a map as a kid that was a full RPG where you could change your party's class and could buy upgrades with experience points. It didn't work well and it's gone now. StarCraft 2 got the same treatment with a level editor, but more importantly, WarCraft 3 got its own editor as well. Warcraft 3 editor is famous for creating a whole other genre of game, the MOBA. So you have the Warcraft 3 editor to thank for games like League of Legends, Dota, and Heroes of the Storm. I mean, think the program and the person who spent hundreds of hours working on the level and the editor. You think these levels take an hour to make? Ha! Try weeks! Or in my case, maybe a year. I, I can maybe pump out one of these in a year. But perhaps RTS isn't your genre and you prefer the other R genre. RPG. Yes, I'm talking about THE RPG Maker. RPG Maker was actually first released all the way back in 1992, called RPG Maker Sekuru Dante 98. It was a Japan-only game, but only eight years later, the US would get the RPG Maker series on the PlayStation. Nowadays, we're up to RPG Maker MV, which is like the, um, I don't know, like the 100th release, if I'm reading this right, which I'm not. It's so the 37th release? 37? Good lord! Well, back in 2000, there really wasn't much you could really do to get your story out other than swapping memory cards with your friends. Nowadays, you're able to compile your game and even sell it on Steam. And the RPG Maker engine has birthed some of the greatest cult classics. Witch's House, Ib, To the Moon, Five Nights at <laughs> Boys 1 through 3, the best FNAF fan game, yeah. Inhale my enragement child. At this point in time, RPG Maker is responsible for some of the greatest story-based games that have flown under the radar for the typical gamer. Now, making an RPG an RPG Maker is a whole other task. Placing towns, forests, seas, and paths are rather easy to do with the tiles they give you. But if you really want to make something great, and I mean something great, you'll need to have a much better grasp on programming. While it provides shortcuts to build small events and scenes, you'll definitely need to know a bit more programming language to effectively make a full RPG. Which of course I don't have, so I was really only able to make a town with no houses or people and a slime battle. And Bob Ross, so it's a perfect 10 out of 10. Alright, let's back it up a little and stop talking about industry changing level editors and do some kickflips in the parking lot with Tony Hawk. That's the dream, people. I've edited the man before, and now I just need to learn how to do kickflips, and we are it! Tony Hawk Pro Skater was THE skating game to have back before something went wrong. I honestly have no idea what happened, I just remember waking up one day and it was a hot mess. But before the fall, there was Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2. Admittedly, I never owned the game until recently, aka I married someone who owned it, and getting to play the game again, it just feels so good to be reminded how rusty I am at skating games. I think one of the coolest parts of the game was getting a chance to create your own skate park. That's right, you too can create a famous skate park that will slowly fall into disarray. The park editor is pretty easy to use. You'll be given a kinda small area to build your park unfortunately, but it's enough space to make something happen. You're given a variety of different ramps, rails, and decorations to build out the skate park of your dreams. If I may be so bold, I would recommend the wonderful Bob Ross Park. 
Pro Skater 2 through 4 would all have the crate apart, but afterwards the feature was removed. Then every fan was hoping for a Pro Skater 5, and then when we finally got that, we all wish it was still dead. R.I.P. Pro Skater. You know what's also a fantastic dead franchise? Time Splitters. Oh man, Time Splitters was the best! Okay, it didn't age that well, but you know what did? Keanu Reeves. That man is breathtaking. You're breathtaking! Aw, oh, thanks Keanu Reeves that future Dan inserted to help me with my crushing self-doubt. Time Splitters was created by some of the developers that broke from Rare after working on GoldenEye and Perfect Dark. It was one of the first twin stick shooters, and unfortunately this was no Halo. Controls are super clunky and most of the time you rely on an auto aim function to take down enemies. But I guess that didn't matter to middle school Dan because my brothers and I played the crap out of this game. Also on a side note, this box art totally has robot nipples on it and that's very confusing to a 13 year old. While the story was absolutely terrible and the multiplayer was excellent, the map editor was even greater. Starting the editor puts you in a big grid where you can place a variety of different rooms and hallways together. Now while the types of rooms are limited, it does include these individual pieces so you can create any size room you want with tons of pillars everywhere. Along with placing all sorts of weapons and gear for the shootout, one of the coolest things you could do with the map editor is adjust the lighting in each room. Want a room to be dark? Boom. Want a room to be blue? Done. Want to give every player you have a seizure? You can, but I'm not going to do that to you. So here's the Bob Ross rave. Time Splitters 2 improved on it much more with adding the option to create your own missions. The new editor adds in game logic for you to use. Create your own objectives, place enemies, and heck, even spawn them on a timer. Just be aware the AI sucks. I tried making this dope wave based map, but they ended up not moving from their spawns. Let's fast forward to the days of the PS3 with our favorite sack boy in Little Big Planet. Sorry, little potato sack peep. You whine just a little too much about the fact that your potato sack itches too much. I didn't get too far into Little Big Planet, but from my limited time playing this game, it's a pretty fun platformer. But to call it a platformer is really kind of a disservice to the game. Little Big Planet was known for its insane amount of customization. Matter of fact, that was a huge draw to the game and a hefty mechanic for some stages. From stickers you can place on the stage to costumes that you can unlock, there was a lot of collecting to be done. But what really set this game apart was the ability to piece together your own stages. Now while Little Big Planet 1 mostly had tools to build platforming levels, Little Big Planet 2 was freaking out of control. People weren't just making stages, they were making full on game modes. There are tons of different ways to play Little Big Planet 2. Jumping into the community section, I was able to play a basic version of TMNT Turtles in Time, Snakes and Ladders, and a fun timed puzzle stage. I was even able to play Plants vs Zombies, I mean, I mean Zombots. Plants vs Zombots. It's different, I promise. This game has so much to offer, including the incredible stage, Bob Ross. All right, let's see what's next. Ah, it's a good day for me when I get to talk about Doom. Still waiting for the day when it will finally declare their love for this channel. Any minute now. During my Doom 2016 review, which if you haven't watched it yet, iCard, there you go, it's incredibly demonetized, so show it some love. Anyway, in that review, I briefly touched on the snap map feature. After playing around with it a little more for this video, I just love this editor so much. The Doom franchise was one of the earliest, if not the first, game to garner a major modding community. The original Doom has been modded all the way up and down. When it was time to reboot the series, the devs decided to give the layman the tools needed to create their own Doom maps. Snap Map is easily one of the coolest and most complex makers in this video. It's on par with both StarCraft and RPG Maker in my personal opinion. Snap Map is very similar to the Time Splitters map editor, placing rooms together, filling the rooms with guns, and boom! Dead demons. Oh hey, Bob Ross. Now that is only a fraction of what this thing can do. Snap Map has a large array of game logic options. Point counters, spawns, even directors for demons that can be used for waves of enemies. And with all of these features, I was able to make you win when you press this button. That, that's about all I can do. 
Other players, though, have created full-on special campaigns with their own stories. Some have made arcade games like a Doom version of River City Ransom. Someone even made FNAF in Doom! I hate that person. It's an incredibly comprehensive maker, and I can't wait to see what they do with it in Doom Eternal. Oh, right! They got rid of it! Thanks. Thanks, Doom. But I still love you. Speaking of FNAF... Oh, joy! This... This I didn't expect. Seriously. I started making this list and thought, no, there's no way someone made a FNAF maker. And then I googled it, and I got a concussion from hitting my head on the desk. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce FNAF Maker. It's pretty good. Glitchy, but pretty good. I'm just as surprised as maybe the two of you are. There are a few kinks in the programming, like cameras not saving for some reason, but I mean... It's probably user error, let's be real. It seems really easy to make in concept, but trust me when I say it's much more complex than you think. In a good way though. With FNAF Maker, you'll be creating an office, cameras, animatronics, and even your own jump scares. There's actually a lot going on here, and the best part is, is that you get to pick all the assets from your computer. Meaning I can hop into Photoshop and create an entire Five Nights at Cyberts, featuring Bob Ross. Yes, this is a real game that I attempted to make. Like I said, it's fairly glitchy. Cameras didn't save properly, as I mentioned, and my door eventually just became my about to jump scare you image. So, eh. it's actually a real neat concept. A lot of work, but hey, you can make your own authentic FNAF fan game. Sorry, I was just having a few flashbacks to FNAF fan game. Excuse me. <laughs> I need a palate cleanse. Colors wave it to a spot. <coughs> okay. I'll never sing on this channel again. Well, I think you know what we're gonna talk about next. We're talking about Smash Bros. Stage Editor. Initially, this was introduced back in the days of the Switch prototype. When you break down the level editor though, it's actually quite impressive. Smash is a game where the terrain you're playing on greatly affects how you fight. The fact that you could simply draw your own stage without major movement glitches during play is impressive. I mean, certainly more impressive than this Bob Ross, but you want to know something? That's Bob Ross. There are also a variety of different tools and obstacles to add into your stage, which is fun for about five minutes until you just go back to battlefield mode. I think that's kind of the disappointing part. Sure, making stages to play on is really cool, but with such a competitive game as Smash, you're really going to depend more on the main stages and their variants. There are definitely a few other games on the list that feels the same, but Smash definitely feels like it falls victim to this more than the rest. That being said, there are still tons of great stages for you to try, and a lot of fan art. I didn't realize that Smash Bros was the new deviant art. Last but not least is probably one of the best Maker games in this video. Following shortly after Super Mario Maker, damn it. Just give me the levels, Dan. I'm not in Mario Maker, I'm in Mega Man Maker! Oh, that's, that's awesome, that's a great game. Right? Nothing like making levels you can jump and shoot through. Yeah, so, you got any levels for me? No, Bob! Ah! Ah! Mega Man Maker is very similar to the Plumber's Maker in almost every way. It's literally just the same, but with Mega Man. And a much wider variety of tools for you. Mega Man Maker includes tiles, enemies, music, powers, and lots more from Mega Man's 1 through 11. While not every single asset is there, most of the original games are fully represented here. The building part is just as easy as Mario's, a grid where you can place blocks, enemies, and power-ups, all in the goal of making a stupidly impossible level that no one can beat. I'm looking at you, Rubber Ross. Which 100% beat one of his levels in SMM2, which means I'm a god now. That is just fact. Not only that, there are a lot of options to set for the player. You can have the player play as Mega Man, Proto Man, or Base. And beyond that, you can choose to give the player any assortment of powers. Want them to only use the Metal Blade? You can do that. Only Jewel Satellite and Rush Coil? They're jumping and shielding. Not only that, bosses can be adjusted to be weak against anything you want. Meaning you could 100% lure someone into a false sense of security just to find out that they have none of the weaknesses. The ultimate dick move. And the best part is that it's a fan game, 100% free and easy to get started. Plus Capcom has done nothing to stop it. Maybe they realize this is the only way to make a good Mega Man game. <laughs> Honestly, you should definitely pick up this game if you're a fan of Mega Man. And plus, you can make Bob Ross. 
and the icing on the cake, it plays just as well as Super Mario Maker 2. Levels? No! Ah! Thank you everyone for watching and being patient. A special thanks to Alyssa B. Crazy, Producer Evan, Bob from The Wolf Den, and my dry bread and blade blur for the editing help. I've had a lot less time to work on these videos lately, but I'm trying my best to pick up the pace for you guys. So make sure you slap that subscribe button and the bell so you know when I finally get my act together. Don't forget to share this video with your friends, and until next time, Cybered out.